Welcome again. Right now we're at Romans chapter 6, verses 16 to 23. Under grace, free from sin. What then, Paul writes, shall we sin because we're not under law, but under grace? May it never be. You see, over and over again, Paul speaks against sin. So it's not like, well, you know what? The law is not in effect anymore. You know, that's done away with. And so so you don't have to worry about sin anymore because if there's no law, there's no sin against the law. Where there is no law, there is no sin against it, obviously. And so the fact that Paul keeps on saying we should not sin tells you right there that the law is still there and it's still possible to sin against the law of God. It's still possible to sin against God. Don't you know that when you present yourselves as servants and obey someone, you are the servants of whomever you obey, whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness? But thanks be to God that whereas you were bond servants of sin, you became obedient, obedient from the heart to that form of teaching to which you were delivered. Being made free from sin, you became bond servants of righteousness. You are a slave. No matter which way you look at it, you are a slave. You are either serving sin disobedience to Torah, or you are serving God by obedience to his Torah. You're either on one side or the other here. It, this is binary. There's no middle ground. You are either a slave to sin or you are a slave by obeying Torah. And you know, with all this talk about sin and righteousness, we need to define what sin really is. First John chapter 3, verse 4 says very clearly that sin is disobeying God's law, disobeying the Torah of God. Anything that disobeys God is sin. You disobey his commandments, that's sin. If you obey the law of God, if you obey his rules, his regulations, if you stay within his guidelines, that is righteousness. Righteousness is the state of being right or doing that which is right, while sin is the state of being wrong, doing that which is wrong. And we know the difference by the commandments that God gave us. Paul continues, I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For as you presented your members, your bodies, your physical bodies, as servants to uncleanness and to wickedness upon wickedness, even so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for sanctification. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit then did you have at that time in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin, having become servants of God, you have your fruit of sanctification and the result of eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we've got a few terms here that you don't hear in church much anymore. That is free from sin, servants of righteousness, servants of God, obedience to righteousness. This is a foreign language to a lot of people, being free from sin, because a lot of people say, well, you know, nobody is free from sin. We're all gonna sin every day when we're just covered by his grace and he'll, he'll understand, God understands and he forgives. That is not what the apostle of grace, so to speak, is saying here, okay? He's talking about being free from sin. Just earlier in this chapter, he talked about being dead to sin, you know, and dead men don't sin. Free from sin, dead to sin obeying, obedience to righteousness. Is it possible to actually be free, 100% free from sin? Yes, that's what it says here. 
Remember, over and over again, Jesus said, go and sin uh, sometimes because I'll understand and I'll just kind of, I'll just close my eyes and pretend it's not there. No, 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 not at all. Jesus said, go and sin. Well, the odd time, because I know it's going to happen. It's just inevitable. You, you know, everybody sins. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Is Jesus reasonable or unreasonable? Is he giving out commands that is impossible to obey? Is he like that? Is he so unreasonable and like a tyrant barking out commands that nobody can obey? No. Go and sin no more is a command that can be obeyed. Because by faith, you have been crucified with Christ. You have been risen with Christ. That's what being born again is all about. By faith, when Jesus died, you died. You are dead to sin. And if you are truly born again, those who are born again truly are very few and far between, even in church. But if you are truly born again, you have been risen with Jesus. You are alive to righteousness. You are beaming with obedience to Torah. You are beaming with obedience to God. Some people believe, well, we don't obey Torah no more. We, we obey a different law. We don't obey the law of Moses, but now we obey the law of Christ. Don't you understand what he said over and over again? He said, you search the scriptures. Jesus said this, you search the scriptures meaning the Torah. You search the Torah thinking that in the Torah itself, in those written words on the paper, you have life. But those words that you read is all about me. John articulated it very well in John chapter one. He said, in the beginning was the word of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And the word became flesh. What's that word? Is the Torah the word of God? Of course, the Torah is the word of God. Jesus is that Torah. Jesus is the living, walking law of Moses. He is the living, walking Torah. He is the Torah in the flesh. The law of Christ is Torah. Torah is the law of Christ. Many Jews today, non-Messianic Jews, they study Torah a lot. And you know, they have a lot to say about Torah, much of which Christians can learn from. But a lot of times, especially in the non-Messianic world, they miss a lot of the heartbeat of God in the Torah. Everything that Jesus taught was right out of the Torah. Loving your enemies, the sins of the heart, not holding a grudge. And you see a lot of Jews today, they, they miss it on that. They hold a lot of people responsible for the horrific things that happened to them and to their ancestors, which is horrific. But the Torah commands them not to hold a grudge. That's forgiveness. That is the love of Christ. That is the forgiveness of Christ. And that is the heartbeat of the Torah. And that's where they miss it a lot. If they were to understand the Torah completely and obey it completely without turning a blind eye to such things as forgiveness, not holding a grudge, then guess what? Their heart would be open to the spirit of Christ and they would be just like many, many of the other Jews in the book of Acts that really came to the knowledge of Jesus. And they all still obeyed Torah. Nobody says they threw Torah out. Nowhere in the book of Acts does it say that anybody renounce Judaism to become a Christian. No, true Christianity is Judaism. And on the other hand, true Judaism is knowing Yeshua HaMashiach. So in the next session, we are gonna get into Romans chapter seven, and it is going to be awesome. Don't miss it. Until then, seek God with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.